meet Ima. I'm a blessing. I'm a blessing. I'm a blessing every day. I'm a blessing. I'm a blessing. I'm a blessing. In all I do, in all I say. Ima wanted to figure out where Hillside Church was having Christmas Eve services this year, so she decided to go over to the Ritzy campus. Christmas Eve services, December 24th, online. Online? What does that mean? I'm going to have to get some youths to help me. I'm not sure if it's a clothes line or power line, what kind of line it is. I don't, I don't know. Oh, oh, there's no youths here. Fine. I'm going to go up to Kohar Place. There's youths over there. Maybe those young pastors at Parkway Campus can help me. <sighs> Fine. Well, I guess I'll just have to head home and try to figure this online thing out myself. Wesleyan Church. Oh, it's Nathan. Could you tell me how to get to your Christmas Eve service? Oh yeah, we're doing all our services online this year. So if you just want to go to uh, wearehillside.church. Oh, we are Hillside? Okay. Oh, there it is. Oh, I can even connect with you. That's awesome. Okay, now wh where do I get to the service? Click on the church online button. Uh, it'll take you right there. Oh, Church on the Line, there it is! Okay, thank you so much! Glad you could join us. Merry Christmas! Yes, Merry Christmas!
Well, welcome everyone to our Christmas Eve service at Hillside. Um, uh oh, something's happening. Uh, she's found us. <gasps> I'm a. Ima has found us and we're, we're recording Ima for so Christmas Eve. You're, oh. you're excited? Oh, yes, I'm excited. I've been looking for you. You have? Yeah. I'm not sure how you found us, but here we are. Oh, I um, knew you were recording. Yeah. And, and um, I was just wondering, could I, could I be part of your well, well, you know, we, we have a lot that we're working on. Okay. And uh, <laughs> I, I know that's good. Um, yeah. But you know, I think, well, if you're okay, we, we wanted to just help you get online to watch the service with everybody else. Is that okay? Oh, okay. But Pastor Jay. Yeah. yeah. You don't have a Christmas hat. I know. I mean, it's, it's Christmas time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have an idea. What? I have an idea. I you, I know you have a great staff. And I'm just going to call them. You are? And, and maybe they can help you with that. Here's the Okay. Well, we'll see how this goes, I guess, eh? Hello? Stephanie? Yes, Pastor Jay needs a hat. A Christmas hat. Yep, I've got it right here. I'll send it right over. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. It'll be right over to you. She okay. said, oh, not a problem. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be right over here. Wonderful. <laughs> Yes, I am. This is going to keep you warm. Yeah, yeah. That's good. You're, oh, that looks much better. You're, you're very observant. <laughs> hey, we're going <laughs> to we're going to have a great service. We hope you enjoy it. God bless. Let's enjoy Christmas Eve at Hillside. Rejoice, our King is here. He shall reign forever. Men of earth and angels cheer. He shall reign forever. Glory right before our eyes. He shall reign forever. Majesty in a manger lies. He shall reign Joy to the world, to the world. The Lord is come. Joy to the world. Shepherds bowing down. Wise men offer him their crowns. Men to now and far beyond. We stand and join the endless song. He shall reign forever. Joy to the world, to the world. The Lord is come. Joy to the world, to the world. God send his son. Joy to the world. 
What's your favorite part of Christmas? Um, getting um, toy. I like presents. Dinner. <laughs> I know what Tessie likes. He likes Christmas toys. Truthfully? Mm hmm. Presents. That doesn't sound good, does it now? Okay. And seeing family. What would you like for Christmas? Like a radical racer. I want a koala for a friend. I want to sing to cat. What do you think Christmas is about? Jesus' birthday. Just Jesus. So Christmas is about the birth of baby Jesus and God's forgiveness for the world. Can you tell me a little bit about baby Jesus? He was born in a manger in a stable and they didn't have a place to stay in Bethlehem. There's no places for you. No, get go away. The, uh, the, all the hotel rooms were all full and all the beds were taken. They went to Bethlehem and then they had to stay in the stables because there was no room. Who do you think lives in the stable? Um, cows, pigs, sheep. There was horse, pigs, ducks. We don't know what animals are called, what how those own things up there. Um, chickens. No, no, no one sings sassy. Roosters. Yeah. Okay. Who is Mary? The person who had met Jesus as, as like a son. What kind of presents do you think Jesus had? God. Three wise men came and they saw a star and they came and brought gifts, uh, which I think were myrrh, frankincense, and gold. Do you remember the shepherds? Then the shepherds told other people and everybody went to see. Well, an angel, an angel appears and they get all scared and the angel says, there's no need to be afraid. God has sent a baby down to earth. The shepherds, they stomp down their fire and run to Bethlehem. Would you like to wish anyone a Merry Christmas? Who? Me. Mommy. Your mommy. <laughs> God. My mom. My family. My mom and dad and my family. Maybe the people watching this at home in quarantine not being able to spend time with their family. Cheese. Yeah, cheese. What's the Christmas story? I hope you're having a great time tonight. And it's time for us to sing some Christmas carols together. So let's sing. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing. Hail the heaven, Prince of 
experience with church I didn't really have one um, neither of my parents brought me to church I would go to church maybe every other year when we visited a grandparent um, I knew of 
that there was a God, but I didn't know like how to follow him or how to walk with him. Well, growing up when I was born, I was actually dedicated and it wasn't until early elementary school, like grade primary, I think I went to Sunday school uh, for a, a couple years. And then that stopped until I was about uh, grade six. And I started going to Hillside Youth Group actually. And I went a few times, but I, I didn't really have much of a relationship with God. It was more of a, a uh, social thing that I came for. And it wasn't until I got sick and the, the church was really helpful and helped me get through some stuff. Uh, the support group was really nice, but it wasn't actually until the beginning of this year when I finally started to read the Bible and started to actually understand what Christianity was and what God was all about. Since then, I've kind of had, grew my relationship with God and learned that the love he has for me. I didn't really have an impression of God. <laughs> I didn't understand it all. My life was kind of chaotic. And I had my daughter at the time, which was about three or four, and she was asking a lot of questions about just life, about God, about why things happened. And so that kind of is what made me go look for something else. To be honest, there, there wasn't really much that I was looking for. I kind of started reading the, the Bible as more of a, I kind of wanted the, the philosophy and all the great Western philosophy reading lists had the New and Old Testament. And so I kind of just started reading it as a, uh, to learn, but then it wasn't until I started to read it and understand what was happening that I really started the to The point where I decided to make the commitment was um, I came with my daughter and then I decided to take Alpha. And then while I was taking Alpha, um, there's just a great sense of like community and that's where I met two women that really took me under their wing and that's when I wanted to really commit to that. Well my relationship with Jesus kind of grew from a, a collective experience over the years. I think um, starting to read the Bible just made me think more about it but then as I started to learn about it uh, my old youth pastor Tim he was a big help in it. Uh, one of my good friends who I was reading the Bible with, uh, she helped me and one of her friends helped me understand some of the questions that I, I didn't understand. Since I decided to follow Jesus, um, my life, I have like a sense of reassurance that I know everything will be okay. Like I, if I'm unsure about something or my life kind of feels like it's crumbling, um, I just pray about it and I just know it will work out. Maybe not how I want it to or thought it would, but it's how it is meant to be. So my relationship with Jesus kind of grew over the collective experience over the years. Um, it really started kind of unbeknownst to me back in when I was sick and through Hillside and being at the group and knowing the support that I had through like Hillside Youth and then the rest of the church. Uh, and then it kind of progressed this year when I started to read the Bible and actually learn who Jesus was. My past knowledge was very limited and uh, it wasn't until I started reading the Bible with a friend of mine from school that I, I really learned who Jesus was and started to grow my relationship with him. To me grace means love and patience and kindness. After about a month of reading the Bible and starting to, to learn what about Jesus and what he wanted me to do, uh, I started to understand more and I think it was around February maybe when I, I really started to understand the Bible enough to try and follow what Jesus wanted me to do. But it wasn't until August when I was finally baptized and I feel like that was a, even though nothing really changed, it felt like everything changed. The church has impacted my life by just being there for me and the kids during hard times where I have had um, serious things happened in my life, like serious surgery, and the church just really came together and made me and my kids feel at home and that we had family here, and they really reached out to us and took care of us. A funny story was uh, a couple years ago, a close family friend passed away, and uh, at that time I really didn't have a relationship with God, but I was asked to do a biblical reading, and I was absolutely shocked because I had never done such a thing and hadn't really read the Bible that much at that point. Um, yet the passage we came uh, to was Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30. 
which essentially is just talking about how if you, when you follow Jesus that uh, you really don't have as much weight on your shoulders, um, figuratively. Um, but I remember a couple months into reading the Bible and, and learning about Jesus and, and that, I remember one day just talking to a friend who was going through some stuff and I realized that just, it felt like a physical weight came off my shoulders and when I like really started to, to lean into Jesus. And, and it's really, that's been the biggest thing that I've felt so far is that everything feels less heavy. I don't have to take on the world all by myself kind of thing. My understanding of grace is just that no matter how many times I fall, that God will just always be there to love me and pick me back up again. Life moves fast, doesn't it? Every day there is so much to fit in. But do you ever stop and think? What's the point of it all? Do you ever ask yourself, is there more to life than this? Alpha is a series of sessions exploring life, faith, and meaning. It's a space to explore the big questions, to say what you think and hear other people's points of view. There's no obligation to say anything and there's nothing you can't say, seriously. I've done Alpha now, and I'm super excited about it. I'm excited to talk about it. I already have a couple people in mind that I want to invite to join Alpha, and it's the connection of people. Everything feels very safe. Everything feels very open. Anytime I had a question, I didn't feel judged by it, which was huge because I'm coming from a non-religious background. I'm, I, I feel like because I don't have any, I didn't have any beliefs that I might get the judgment of I don't know enough or I, I don't know better, and that's not what I felt at, at all. If anything, there was, it was just completely safe. And that's huge. So I would love to give that kind of security to somebody else where they don't have that kind of direction. I honestly can say I enjoyed Alpha so much. I was someone who from a young age always felt trapped wanting to escape my surroundings and never felt like I was part of anything. And I definitely grew up very much alone wondering why I was here and like who was there to protect me and love me. I thought for sure, aside from my son, that I would spend this lifetime continuing that search for love and trying to get it right. You know, trying to make sure that I knew how to keep someone loving me. I have decided to follow Jesus and I don't plan on ever stopping. I never thought I would say those words. I didn't know anything about Jesus. I wasn't informed. I didn't even know if he existed. And now I've got um, no doubt in my heart. I'm finding a place for him with me, which is kind of scary and thrilling at the same time. I think that my favorite week was the healing one where you know we, we went back and we talked about the miracles that uh, Jesus did and how healing through God is possible. There was one week in Alpha where it talked about Jesus's love. It talked about, you know, us belonging and it brought up family. Definitely pulled out my heartstrings and I just started crying. Huge. And I, I feel like there's a lift, a weight um, that's come off of me. I've started to pray. I never even prayed before. And that, it's given me so much. I think there's a quote, it was, instead of worry, pray. And I, now every time I worry and get stressed out, I'm starting to replace that with prayer. And that's what uh, I've gained from allowing Jesus into my life. Not allowing, but opening up to that, I guess is the right way to explain it. it is that prayer, that connection, that being able to talk to somebody that's not just, you're, you're not just stuck in your head kind of thing. I have absolutely decided to follow Jesus. It's, it's exciting to me and it's something that I was never raised around, but the idea and the feeling that I feel it's huge, so absolutely, I absolutely want to follow Jesus. I don't know about you, but those were amazing stories of transformation, and it happened in their lives through Alpha. So we would encourage you to take Alpha. If you have questions, if you're exploring faith, there's nothing better than Alpha, so when it's offered again online, we'd love for you to take it.
as we continue with our service, we'd love to take a moment just to pray. Fatima is going to lead us in prayer at this time. Fatima. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you that we can worship you. Thank you that you sent your son Jesus to come into this earth and that we can celebrate his coming. Lord, we just pray for this service and we worship you during this Christmas season. I pray that you will open our hearts for this hour and that we will enjoy and we will come into your presence to celebrate the Christmas season. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Amen. come like a mighty storm with all the strength of a hurricane you could have come like a forest fire with the power of heaven in your flame but you came like a winter swept in like a tidal I hope that you have been enjoying this evening. It's been a great evening so far. I just want to share with you some thoughts as we are near the close of our time tonight. You know, this is the night that we celebrate that everything changed. When the baby was born, everything changed in the world. It really directs us to Luke chapter 2 and verse 11. Let me read it for you. It says, The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. Here was this child born in Bethlehem. I mean, why was that such a significant event? I mean, babies are born every day all over the world and have been since this baby was born. What is it? What's so significant about that? Let me see if this helps. Think of a photographer, a photographer who is looking for that one photo that would set them on a new career path and they get it. And that one photo helped them to have a new trajectory for their future. 
Or think of the author who's writing and writing and writing and submitting manuscripts and nobody seems to pick up the work, but all of a sudden there it is that one person says, I like your work and I want to extend a contract to you to, you to write and now their career is forever changed. <laughs> or think of the person that uh, says, I want to ask them out. I want to ask them on a date and, and they finally find the courage to do so and that date leads to a relationship which leads to a marriage or a wedding and a marriage and hey how cool is that that they took that step and their life was changed forever you see on this night when we celebrate the coming of the Christ it's the night that changed everything when this baby was born and you might think why is that important well we recognize that in that day the world was living in darkness and hope was dissipating there was the long-awaited wait for the Messiah and so people were knowing that the prophecies had been told that there would be this child that would come and would bring light into the darkness and so that is exactly what Jesus came to do he came to bring light to bring hope and he changed everything you know we have been living in a difficult time over this past eight to nine months we have been living in a, a, a season of time that like never before and there can be a lot of concern a lot of fear and for many people hope might feel like I'm, I'm losing hope where is the hope well we do have maybe a bit of hope in that we know vaccines are arriving and before long over a number of months and a period of time maybe we will be able to have a vaccine that will help us so so we know that there is something that's coming that's going to be helpful but just like back then there could be those that were waiting and and the world was dark and they needed a savior the same is true for us we need a savior now I'm not talking about a vaccine as much as I want to be a part of receiving a vaccine probably like you do I'm not talking about our physical health being saved although that's very important to us I'm talking about spiritual health I'm talking about knowing 100% full assurance in our heart and soul that we are right with God you see Jesus was born so that we could be born born again we could become a new creation we can understand what it is to walk with God in the fullness of all that God has in store for us so here's the great truth of Christmas that Jesus changed the trajectory of life and life for then and life for now and you and I can experience that on a personal level and I, I want you to experience that like you've already heard tonight people that have shared how their lives have been changed by God thank you Michael and thank you Katie for sharing that and those that uh, have been a part of Alpha uh, maybe you've taken Alpha maybe it would be a great opportunity for you to take Alpha someday but to hear the ways in which Alpha has changed lives it, it's a powerful journey for all of us that we can see this child that came over 2,000 years ago that he can change lives today that is very cool it was on June the 6th 1944 when the Allied forces stormed the beaches of Normandy and we would know that day to be called D-Day a significant day that changed military action forever there would come a day on November the 22nd 1963 I was just five months old and there would be a United States president who would be assassinated in a convertible and it would change forever the security methods of how presidents would be safe on September the 11th 2001 New York City and Washington and a field in Pennsylvania would all be ravaged by these planes that would forever just burn into our minds 9-11 and security measures would be forever changed in this world in March 2020 there would be this change around the globe called a pandemic and we would know it as COVID-19 
and it has forever changed the way we think of health and how we interact with one another. And over 2,000 years ago, there was a baby born, and that baby would change history and would continue to change lives over time. And how amazing it is to know that we on this date now, think of this, December the 24th, 2020, you and I can know that our lives can be transformed by the power of God, which comes from this little baby, Jesus. You and I can have new life. We, we can be made new. How cool is that? That Jesus came to set us free. To help us to understand what he was all about. You see, that's why he was the Savior. He was the Messiah. He was God with us. And he is the one to whom we turn and we can place our faith and our trust. And what better day, think about it, December 24th, 2020, when you could look back years from now and say it was on that night that my life changed forever. The trajectory of my life changed because I accepted Jesus into my life. I want to give you that opportunity, and I invite you to have an open heart tonight. Be courageous to receive the love of Christ as he came in the form of a baby, as he would live on this earth, as he would die, give his life, but then he would resurrect. That's the whole Easter story. All of this for us, that we could know God. I want you to accept Jesus tonight. Will you do that? Let's pray about that now. God, thank you for this opportunity to pray and to invite you into our lives. I know there are many people that have already made that decision, but there may be those who are watching this evening, or they may watch this at another time, that somehow in some way they recognize it is time for me to make a decision to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and as the scripture has been read tonight, that he would be the Messiah, the one who would help me to understand what a right relationship is with God. So I pray, God, you would give us that courage and strength to make these decisions, and you would walk with us all the days of our life, as we know you will. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you, everyone, for being a part of our service. If there's any way we can walk with you and join you on your spiritual journey, if you want to connect with us at Hillside and be a part of a body of believers that are on this journey of faith, we would be honored for that. As we come now to a close of our service, we're going to be lighting candles. I hope that you have something there with you and you'll be able to light a candle as we are going to be in just a moment singing Silent Night. So if you will, go ahead and uh, get your candles. You may have had kind of a one candle in the room already, but if you want to go ahead and grab a candle and light it, we are together going to sing Silent Night. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the whole Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their ancestral towns for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, his fiance, who was now obviously pregnant. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. Silent night, holy night, all is gone. i
That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Well, we have enjoyed that beautiful song, Silent Night, and I hope that you had a candle and you had an opportunity just to enjoy this moment on Christmas Eve. And so thank you again for joining us. And in just a moment, the staff and Ima are going to say a final kind of Merry Christmas, but just hang tight if you will for that. I want to share with you two quick things. First of all, this coming Sunday, December the 27th, we will be online for our services at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. You can go to our website, wearehillside.church, and that will take you to church online, and you can look at either of those services and watch on Sunday morning. Starting the first Sunday of January, as we launch into 2021, I'm going to begin a series called God and the Pandemic. It's on our minds. We have lots of questions. We're trying to figure this all out. We're so thankful for what has happened in finding vaccines and the good things we see ahead, but we still have questions. So I hope you will watch with us. It will be online January the 3rd, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. as I begin God and the Pandemic. I hope that you will join us for that. Well, for this final Merry Christmas, I hope that you can hear from us as a staff that we want to wish you a blessed Christmas. Here we go. Merry Christmas! 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 Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for being a part of our online Christmas service at Hillside. It's been a joy to be together. We wish you a Merry Christmas and all the best in 2021. God bless and take care.